Hi, this is CB, and this time I'm going to be talking about getting started with digital scrapbooking in Photoshop Element 6. And last time I talked about the the organizer. This time I'm going to be talking about the editor, which is so. This is sort of the second part of of that, and getting used to using Element 6 to digital do digital scrapbooking. So I have here a picture open of my son, and I could have I didn't do it this way, but I could have from the organizer chosen one of those photos and maybe right clicked on it and chosen full edit or there's a, the edit button and I think I showed you how to open up the photo into the editor but anyways you'll see I've got the photo open this is the main work area down here is your photo bin which as you can see it says show open files and once I get a few more open you'll see them down here represented and this is the layers palette over here I currently have the move tool selected that's this very first tool in the in the toolbar so I want to get a digital paper open and I don't keep my digital papers in the organizer so I'll show you the other way to get files which is in here you just choose file and then whoops open browse through here until you get to the folder you want in this case it's the um, I'm using a tutorial folder I've got already for this and I have this paper that I usually use for these first layouts here it's from my sampler kit at digitals so now I have the paper open and as you can see in the bin it's showing it's there too right now the current file that's open is the um, baby blue floral, floral I can't speak but that's why it's showing in the main work area here as well as the layers palette the trick now that I want is to get the, the picture onto the paper and to do that there's several ways you can do it you can copy and paste one onto the other or click and drag I'm gonna click and drag and I'm going to use a method that some people use some people don't but what I'm going to do is I want both files to be visible in this workspace at the same time and I'm going to click this little button in between the minimize and the close on this particular file I can't remember what this thing is if I hover long enough on it perhaps it'll tell me but I think it says restore or something like that so click on it once and now as you can see it sort of shrunk my file down a bit but shows both of them at the same time in the workspace so what I want to do is I want to take the picture, click and drag it over onto the paper. I want to click once on my, oops, well I didn't mean to click twice, I'm going to do it again. Click once on my photo to make it the active file that's where I'm working with. And you can see from the layers palette over here it shows the thumbnail. You can click and drag from here, oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that, <laughs> hit that too much. Click and drag from here over to there, but I like to use the layers palette because sometimes you may have a multi-layered file and you only want to drag one or a few layers so it's just sort of a habit to get into to work with the layers palette I click I'm holding my mouse down dragging over here and I let go and you will see there it is represented on the paper now I didn't make any changes to this photo and I'm pretty much done with it so it's a good idea to close it and have as few files open at one time as possible and I'm going to go ahead and put this back up to where it fills the whole screen again so if we look over at the layers palette here we've got the digital paper and then up above it because this is considered the top of the layers palette I have my photo that's why you're seeing the photo on top of the background paper here over here is because if you look at the layers palette this is the top this is the bottom and anything that's in the stack the layer stack up closer to the top will be more visible than things that are at the bottom let me demonstrate that by I'm going to unlock this paper you see there's a lock over here if I double click on this it brings up the new layer dialog and I'll just click OK and now the lock is gone and it's called layer zero so now I can move this box background layer around if I kept it locked it would have to stay at the bottom of the stack but now I can move it so if I click and drag this particular layer picture of my son below that now you can no longer see the photo that's how the layers palette works like I say whatever is that closer to the top is going to cover up stuff that is at the bottom so right now since this paper is at the top and it's bigger than my photo it's covering up the entire photo so let me go ahead and drag that back up to the top so we can see it and I'll demonstrate that one more way with text I'm gonna use the text tool here I'm gonna click once and I'll just type my son here and if the normally there's a checkbox but since I have this min window kind of minimized I can't see it so I'm just double click oops double click would have been okay <laughs> just single click I mean, double click was too much. <sighs> no, nope. oh, forget it. <laughs> Choose a different tool. Anyway, sometimes things don't work the way you want. But if you look at the layers palette, when you type with the text tool, it adds a new text layer, and that's editable. I can go in and double click on this 
again, and now it's editable again. Like I said, I could change that if I wanted to, but I'll just leave it at that. So I have the text layer, I have my picture of my son, and the background paper. Right now you can read the entire line of text because it's above the photo, but again, if I click and drag that below it, now some of that is being obscured by my photo because the photo is on the top layer and the text is below it. Let me move it back up to the top. And that's how digital scrapbooking works. Just like with paper scrapbooking, you usually start with a piece of paper, in this case the digital paper at the bottom, and you start building up from there. The placement of things in the layers palette is going to affect what you see on the screen. And you could just, at this point, you could maybe bring in with file and open, bring in some other embellishments and things like that, add some more text, journaling, stuff like that. Then just choose file and save as, and I would strongly recommend the first time that you save your file, save a PSD version, this Photoshop format, with the layers box checked, which it usually is by default. That will save all these layers so that if you have to come back and make any changes, it will be available to you to do that. I'm CB, and I hope this helped you get comfortable with starting in digital scrapbooking in Photoshop Element 6. Thanks for watching.